Stephen Sotloff was a man who gave his life to the Middle East, to its people, and to reporting the historic events that unfolded across the region. Growing up in Miami at a young age, Stephen showed a curiosity about the world. He was very, very inquisitive. He was always interested in reading books. And he always wanted to see the pyramids and the seven wonders of the world. At a very, very young age, he was already interested in traveling and going to far off places. In high school, Stephen was inspired to rekindle the Kimball Union Academy newspaper and became its editor. He went on to study journalism at the University of Central Florida, where he wrote for the university magazine and developed his passion for reporting. After college, Stephen went to the old city of Sana'a, the capital of Yemen, where he studied Arabic and he would become fluent. He fell in love with the Middle East while he was there and he started writing stories of the things that he saw all around him and he really developed a passion for reporting and being a voice to the voiceless. Stephen first came to the media line at American News Agency covering the Middle East in 2009. He had little experience in journalism and so his pitch for full-time employment was turned down. But Stephen was persistent. It was three years after that that he came to me and he said, Felice, I want to write for the media line. I've been to Yemen, Egypt, Libya. He's covered the region. And at that point, there was no stopping Stephen. In the two years following the Arab Spring, he provided insightful, unvarnished, first-hand reports from across the Middle East for media outlets like the Christian Science Monitor, Time, Foreign Policy, and CNN. A first-hand account from the guards who witnessed the attack on the U.S. compound in Benghazi. There was no protest. Um, they were armed with AK-47s, RPGs. They had uh, blast uh, demolitions, uh, you know, for uh, explosives for blast fishing. They had grenades. By late 2012, Stephen made his way to Syria, where he met a few other American freelancers who shared his frustration that the world was not paying enough attention to this brewing conflict. In August 2013, on one of his trips back to Syria, Stephen was kidnapped and held captive by ISIS. Mark Marginetas was a Spanish journalist held in captivity with Stephen, along with 21 other foreign hostages, including the Americans James Foley, Kayla Mueller, and Peter Kasich. Mark became Stephen's closest friend in captivity. Steve was extremely brave, and for me, he was uh, an example to follow, and um, he was um, a source of inspiration. Under the most difficult circumstances, Stephen's personality came to the fore. He's somebody who had a strong sense of justice. When you share your, uh, such a small space with 20 other people, and you have to share, you know, food, you have to share the space, the little space that you have left to, uh, to uh, sleep. Um, many conflicts arise when things were not going in the right direction. He was somebody who uh, was um, ready to, you know, to preserve the, the justice, in, 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 the justice would prevail in that group. When Stephen was in captivity, there was a letter smuggled out by one of the prisoners that he was in prisons with. And in that letter, Stephen was saying goodbye, telling us that we should find closure, telling us that we'd hug and kiss each other and, and make sure that we don't fight. And he realized that he was not going to be coming home. This was a blueprint of how we should live our life. After being held in captivity for more than a year, Stephen was murdered by ISIS on September 2nd, 2014. But I promised that they would leave, I would leave no stone unremoved in order to grant his, to, to grant his freedom. And uh, I was in, well, I, you know, I couldn't. But, um, and I hope I, uh, and this is for me, uh, my way of uh, paying homage to him for his exceptional courage, his dedication to journalism, and his devotion to the people of the Middle East, America Abroad Media honors Stephen Sotloff in memoriam. <laughs>